Hi everyone and welcome to a Theme Park Worldwide News Update. Yesterday, the Legoland Windsor Resort, located here in the UK, announced that Viking River Splash would be closing permanently. In this video, I'm going to share all of the news about this unexpected announcement, and along with that, talk a little bit about the history of the ride, the manufacturer, when it was installed, changes that have been made to Viking River Splash over the years, and of course, most importantly, talk about why the ride's closed and what could be coming next to that space at the park. Uh, but yeah, this came really unexpected. Uh, we've not really heard any rumblings or rumors about this happening. However, of course, the ride over the past couple of years has been quite unreliable with lots of closed days and also downtime. But I'll go more into that uh, later on in the news updates. Um, but yeah, the last chance to ride will be before the 25th of September, 2023. As uh, so the Park of Game was just under a month uh, to get there and get some last rides in. Just want to say straight away, I do really appreciate how the park have gave people the chance to go there and give it a bit of a send off and uh, get the last rides in. The worst announcements are those like a few years ago when Wild Mouse closed at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Um, it shut at the end of the season, no one suspected a thing, and then we went in next year and sadly it had been removed. So yeah, I just want to say fair play to Legoland for actually giving people the chance to go and um, send this ride off. Uh, not like I'm sure most people have got that much of an emotional connection to it, uh, like something as old like the Wild Mouse, but still. Still, it's been at the park for quite some time. Um, so it's one of those that many people did enjoy riding. So yeah, it's nice how they gave people that opportunity um, to go and bid it farewell. Now, the ride, of course, is going to close um, from the 25th of September, um, which is, what, about a month uh, before the end of the main theme park season. I mean, Legoland is operational uh, throughout winter with various different events now. It's almost a 365 offering at Legoland. Not quite, but almost. Um, so yeah, they've kind of kept it open for the summer period and then closing it at the end of summer. So yeah, good timing really for this one. Now, um, before I talk a little bit about uh, the ride experience, let's just go into when this opened. So yeah, the ride actually opened at the park back in 2007. I remember being there uh, the opening few days. I wasn't there the opening day, but the first few days of this being open. And uh, I remember us all thinking, oh, it's quite a big investment for Legoland. At the time, you've got to bear in mind, a lot of the big rides that are there now, especially dark rides, weren't there. And uh, so with this, a full-scale rapids, it was quite a big investment at the time. Now, um, yeah, opened in 2007, manufactured by ABC Rides. Of course, a lot of Rapids rides, not all of them, but uh, the vast majority are manufactured by Intamin. So yeah, with this one, they went for ABC Rides. And that always quite intrigued me as to why the park went for that manufacturer for this. Um, but then I really thought, actually, is it more due to the fact that it's a bit more compact? The trough does some really kind of tight turns and bends, something you don't often see on the Intamin Rapids rides. And of course, Intamin have built lots of Rapids, especially, um, you know, some that you may know here in the UK. Okay, Congo River Rapids at Alton Towers, along with that, uh, the Adventure Cove River Rapids at Drayton Manor, uh, manufactured by Intamin, and the corners and things aren't quite as tight. So I thought maybe that's why they went for it initially uh, from ABC, because yeah, it was quite a tight space, uh, a hillside location, of course, Legoland Windsor. So maybe that's why uh, they went for that as the manufacturer. Now, it wasn't actually just that ride that opened up. It was part of a new themed area called Land of the Vikings. And uh, yeah, with this one, the Land of the Vikings area does literally just feature that ride. But uh, yeah, I do find it quite interesting, really, you know, how they kind of made its own land, but also they didn't add anything. There's no like food offering or anything like that. Literally, it's just the ride that's part of this area. And uh, yeah, it does say that the area um, we're going to be saying bid farewell to as well, which is quite interesting. So as much as the ride made up the area, uh, obviously they're not planning on keeping that theme with whatever happens there in the future, because we're saying goodbye um, to Land of the Vikings, which is quite interesting. Now, of course, uh, with a Rapids ride like this, it features nine different seats on there. And so, yeah, the boats are actually quite well themed, actually. And we'll make the way round a 405 meter trough with various different Lego sculptures and effects. Now, you've got to think we're at Legoland Windsor. A big uh, part of their USP is Lego models. It is Legoland after all. And the best part of the theming on this ride was all of the Lego statues around, because there were some great ones um, that we all really like seeing. Uh, along with that, there was actually a lot more theming um, than there is now on that ride. As you're going to see some, some footage here that I captured back in 2014. So bear in mind, the ride had already been operational for seven years at this point. But this gives you a bit of an idea on how much theming Viking River Splash used to have. Uh, now granted, it still wasn't a themed masterpiece or heavily landscapes, but there was certainly more there than there is now. 
In fact, you'd exit the turntable at the station. There'd be like a waterfall effect there uh, that would get you quite wet, uh, but would go off partially, uh, but would still get you pretty wet. You make your way around, you'd have more water guns there. Um, along with that, there were some other effects uh, with water squirting in. And the big highlight was actually a set of small buckets and a large bucket towards the end of the ride where you could actually get soaked. Now, this wouldn't happen to every boat. Uh, the bucket was just on random timing. Literally, it would fill up and then empty. Um, so sometimes there wouldn't be a boat there. Other times, um, you'd be right underneath it. And I remember maybe on average, we'd say maybe every six to eight boats would get an absolute soaking from this. Uh, the bucket would tip down and we're talking like a Valhalla style soaking from Pleasure Beach. You know, it was a literally full on dripping wet through. And you know, it was great as much as the rides never looked the part. And I've always kind of said that in the vlogs on the channel um, when we've gone to Legoland. It's quite an ugly rapids. I'm not gonna miss its appearance. Um, it used to have a brown trough, but obviously it got painted to blue a few years ago um, to try and kind of blend it all in a bit more but it still never quite looked um, the part this one but uh, yeah of course there used to be a lot of theming and then over the years more theming started to be removed and unfortunately in 2017, um, we saw a lot more theming start to come away from that. A lot of other rapids rides were toned down. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of the point where, you know, it became a, quite a bland, boring experience. It was the same with Congo River Rapids at Alton Towers, uh, where the waterfalls were turned off. Uh, and uh, yeah, it kind of made a, a big change to water rides, an incident that happened back in 2017. And yeah, that kind of changed water rides around the world. You know, and we saw a lot more extra safety precautions added, a lot of rapids added, um, like higher backrests and that sort of thing for safety and uh, yeah of course we saw effects be turned off hence with Congo River Rapids the waterfalls have come back this year but they were off for you know five, like five years which is crazy um, but uh, yeah it's so nice to, to kind of uh, have those back now however with this the effects never came back um, and that's been always a, a, a real negative for this ride you know it was quite bland along with that there was no tunnels there was no like big epic waterfalls at the side um, it was lacking from the start this one even though it did used to have some better theming um, than it does now. But yeah, 405 meter um, long ride will last about two and a half to three minutes. Um, and yeah, you wouldn't get absolutely soaked on there, um, but uh, depending on if you got that bucket. Now, um, it's one of those that you rarely get a splash on there, to be honest. It's called Viking River Splash. You barely get a splash on it, to be honest now. But uh, yeah, of course, so we've kind of seen this gradual decline with that ride. The past time, kind of two to three years, it's also had quite a lot of downtime. And I made a comment on this in the vlog from summer. Luckily, we went on it when we was there in July. That will be our last ride, because as you know, we head to Florida in a few days. We won't be there for the last day. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm glad we went on it. I'm glad we said, you know what, let's just do it. Um, we hadn't heard that it was gonna close or anything, but it had been very unreliable. And that kind of leads me on to um, why this ride is closed or why I think it's closed. Obviously the park haven't confirmed this, but I literally think it's due to running costs uh, and reliability. Um, because you've got to think, as much as this ride only opened in 2007, they did really go for a, a cheaper manufacturer compared to an Interbin ride. And along with that as well, um, a lot of the experience has been took away now since the removal of the buckets and other effects. Along with that, it does seem like, you know, it's not that reliable now. It's had a lot of downtime. It doesn't look very visually pleasing because it's not really had the theming on there. And also running costs, for a fun fact for you, Rapids rides in general are the most expensive rides for theme parks to run. It's like at Congo River Rapids at Alton Towers. Um, it uses that much power, that much energy. And for example, if you've ever wondered why in some parks um, that haven't really got a lot of power infrastructure, such as Legoland or Alton Towers, um, you know, it, it, they actually open them rides at different times to other rides in the park because of the power consumption that it takes to run. So that could also be a factor in this, the running costs. Um, but yeah, I think it's more down to the fact that, you know, this ride, um, you know, isn't visually very appealing. And also along with that, um, it's just had a lot of downtime, a lot of issues. So that's probably all coming to the fact that, you know, they can remove this. Luckily, we don't really see that many removals at Legoland Windsor. Um, there's been a lot of new additions. So I'm not feeling too sad that they're taking something out. And also it's opening up quite a large space. Now, of course, Legoland Windsor, I mentioned earlier, it's very hilly. However, this is quite a large area. Now you've got to bear in mind, there's a show building there, which is for a dark room ride, Ninjago the ride that's located in that area. Used to be a maze there, a hedge maze if you remember back in the day. So yeah, that does take up some of the space and the rapids kind of meanders around the back of that. But still, we're talking quite a large footprint here. Now, we know that construction's underway on their new roller coasters for next year. They've got two dueling coasters opening up. Um, but could this be a possible coaster site again for another roller coaster? I mean, they get the crowds down there, you could certainly fit that. 
Something else that could either work on there, of course, is another water ride. Bear in mind, you have already got a couple of water rides at the park already. However, could we see a replacement? I don't think we will, personally. I think this would be something different. Maybe a brand new themed area um, could fit in that space with a few flat rides, maybe. Could we see another dark ride go into that place? Um, the possibilities are endless. However, you've got to think it is quite hilly. So, you know, I would love to see a coaster on there. I mean, at the end of the day, it's Legoland. Yes, they're building another coaster, but I think another family coaster is needed. You look at the other Lego resorts like Billund and Florida, they've got more coasters, more hardware. Um, you know, and as much as it's a family park, you still need some more coasters, in my opinion, um, to soak up that capacity. And we're not talking big thrill rides, just family coasters to get people through, um, which really helps with the park capacity. So, um, yeah, I think that's what we might see. Um, something completely different going in there. However, there is also a possibility that this is just a retheme. Now, I just want to get that in there. The park have said that it's closing um, and we're kind of losing um, your last time to go with the Vikings. I don't think this is the case. I think this is a full removal. However, there is a, a tiny possibility, I guess, that it could be a retheme and that's going to be or, or an upgrade to the ride um, and then they'll retheme it. But uh, I think that's highly doubtful, but it is certainly a possibility too. I think we're probably looking at a full removal and something else coming in. But then really, it did only open in 2007. So could they refurbish it, make it more reliable, more energy efficient, and make it look prettier with some new theming? So, you know, it, it's anything's possible. I think we're going to be seeing a full removal, but you never know. But uh, drop us your comments down below on this video. Share your best memories from riding. Do you remember that big bucket tipping over? Uh, and along with that, just your general thoughts about this removal from Legoland Windsor. Yeah, unexpected announcements. It wasn't thinking I'd be filming this video today. Um, but here we are. Thanks for joining us for another Theme Park Worldwide News update. We've got a Nemesis construction update on the way for you tomorrow, our final one for a few weeks, because of course we're heading out to Orlando, Florida. And uh, yeah, then along with that, uh, there's going to be another news update coming, talking all about the American Heartland Theme Park. This was announced a month ago, but I've still not had my chance to uh, talk about it in detail. I've had that much going on, catching up on the news updates, so that's going to be coming up for you to enjoy here on Theme Park Worldwide as well. But uh, thanks again for watching. I'm Sean Sandbrook. And that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there, keep on riding. See you in the next video.